The title of this message is, The Devil is Real. And I'm preparing this message and did prepare this message solely with, for one purpose, and that is to try to prove out of the Word of God that the devil is alive, that the devil is doing well, and that he's a personal devil. I believe that many of you will agree with me that there is an effort being put forth today to destroy our faith in the inspired, infallible Word of God. I believe that the Bible is the Word of God. And I believe that the Bible, if it teaches anything, teaches that there is a devil and that he is real. If the devil is not real, then God is not real. Jesus Christ is not real. The Holy Spirit is not real. Abraham is not real. Nebuchadnezzar is not real. And we go right on down through the Bible, naming all of the other people of the Bible, and say that none of them are real, because the Bible, the same Bible that tells us about God, the same Bible that tells us about Jesus Christ, the same Bible that tells us about the Holy Spirit, the same Bible that tells us about Noah and Adam and Abraham and Elijah, tells us that there is a devil and that he is real. Now, I know that in many of our universities, many of our colleges today, and even in many of our seminaries, there are men that teach that do not believe that the devil is real. So I prepared this message that I'm about to give you on this cassette. I prepared it so that preachers could use it maybe in their prayer services. Maybe you could use it in your young youth meetings, your young people's meetings and your youth meetings. Maybe you could use it, I tell you, to show that there is a devil and to show it out of the Word of God. Now, we have spent hours upon top of hours in the preparation of this message. So I trust then that it will be a blessing to all of you that hear it. Now, as I said a moment ago, there are preachers, so-called, there are priests, so-called, in the Catholic Church that do not believe that the devil is real. For example, uh, just recently I noticed this article by Reverend Peter J. Riga of the St. Mary's College in California, and it appeared in one of the, U uh, in the U.S. Catholic, uh, published in Chicago by the Clarentian Fathers. And I noticed that he had this article, and just let me quote him here, he says, uh, true Christianity neither needs nor should it desire such a fallacy, fallacious prop as the devil. He goes on to say <clears throat> that the conception served in ancient times to explain evil influences in the world, and it should be dropped and never used again. He never gives up. I tell the devil, my dear friends, always is present. He, this priest went on to say, as we move further into modern history, belief in a personal devil will only prove more and more of an embarrassment to true Christianity. Can you imagine, my dear friends, that a man teaching in a Catholic seminary, Catholic college, would make such a statement? You say, yes, preacher, I can imagine it. Well, I tell you, maybe many in our own seminaries, in our own colleges, they may not be as plain as this Catholic priest was in his denial of the devil, but many of them do not believe in a personal devil. If you have a pastor that does not believe in a personal devil, you're going to suffer with that preacher if you put your tithe into such a church. I believe that with all of my heart and with all of my soul, that God will hold you responsible if you put your money, if you leave your estate to a church where they deny that the devil is real and that the devil is a literal devil. Satan is wiser today than he was years ago. He never gives up. He never sleeps. He never admits defeat. He is always on the go, always ready, my dear friends, to damn and to destroy, always seeking those that he may destroy because he knows that his time is short. Satan is wiser today than he was years ago. This wisdom is manifest, manifest certainly in getting men, especially theologians, to deny his existence and to worship him as a religion. One must refute a lot of scripture in order to believe that there is no personal devil are that the devil is not real. God in his word is given much teaching and warning on the subject of the devil. Roman numeral number one are first, the personal pronouns referring to, the, uh, to Satan are numerous. I'll just be able to give you a few of them. In James chapter four and verse seven, the Bible said, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he, H-E, will flee from you. In first Peter chapter five, verses eight and nine, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom 
he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In John chapter 8 and verse 44, which is one of the most terrific verses in all of the Bible on the reality of the devil and that he is a person. In John 8, 44, we read, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So we see the personal pronouns that are used here in this one verse in relation to the devil. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Again, there is another series of personal pronouns. In Revelation chapter 12, in verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that, uh, uh, that his time is short. So we see again uh, personal pronouns. And then in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15, And no marvel, for Satan himself, himself, notice that personal pronoun, is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now let us notice what he is. Now what does the Bible say that the devil is? Is he a person? Is he real, or is he a myth? Is he just a principle? Is he just a name out there in space, or is the devil real? First of all, we notice that the Bible says in John 8, 44, that he is a murderer. In, read in John 8, 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Now you'll notice that the first thing that he had the son of Adam to do was to kill his own brother Abel. Cain rose up and murdered his brother. Murder sprang into the world full grown because when the devil came, the first murderer came upon this earth. And then the Bible says that he is a liar. Notice there, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. John 8:44. So the devil, what is he? He is a murderer, he is a liar, but that's not all. The Bible says he is a sinner in 1 John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the devil was the first sinner. He was the first one to ever commit sin. Lucifer, or the devil. And then he is an adversary. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And then he is an enemy. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse 25, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And Matthew 13 and 20, 39 identifies the enemy. And the enemy that sowed, that is, sowed these evil seed, um, and the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And then we see that not only was the devil a murderer, a liar, a sinner, and a, an adversary, an enemy, but he is a devourer. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh them out about seeking whom he may devour. And then he is an accuser. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. He was the one that brought the accusation that he brought against Job. I tell you, he brings accusations against every saint of God. There is not a child of God anywhere in the world, a real servant of God, but what the devil at some time or another has brought an accusation against you before the Father. And then the Bible says he is a coward. 
he'll flee from you when you resist him. In James 4, 7, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's why I say if I was painting the devil, I would not paint him red. I would not paint him white. I would not paint him black. I would not paint him pink. I would paint him a solid yellow because he is yellow all the way through. And then we find that in the ninth place, he is a tempter. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 3 declares, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and verse 5, For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. So we see that there are nine things here that I have brought out, and there are many more, but for the, the fact that this cassette only runs for 30 minutes, I have to limit it. What is he? He is a murderer. He is a liar. He is a sinner. He is an adversary. He is an enemy. He is a devourer. He is an accuser. He is a coward, and he is a tempter. Now, let us notice in the third place his positions. First of all, the Bible says that he is the prince of this world. In John chapter 12 and verse 31, now is the judgment of this world. How shall the prince of this world be cast out? And then we find in John 14 and 30, hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. In John 16 and 11, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. So we see then that one of the positions of the devil is that he is the prince of this world. Now, when I realize that, I can understand why the, de why the world is going to hell as fast as it's going. Can you understand why we have all of the dance halls, all of the beer joints, all of the liquor stores? Can you understand why we have all of the wine shops? Can you understand why we have all of the places of abortion, whether it's a hospital or whether it's a clinic? It doesn't make any difference to me. I tell you, all of this is sponsored, operated, and controlled by the prince of the world, the devil. And then, my friends, he is the God of this age. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we see that he is indeed the prince of this world. He is the God of this age. And then he is the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Where, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And then we find in the fourth place that he is the prince of our realm of demons. In Matthew 9, 34, But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. In Luke chapter 11 and verse 15, But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. So we see then his positions. He is a prince of the world. He is a god of this age. He is a prince of the power of the air. And he is the prince of the realm of demons. Now let us notice in the fourth place what he has. What does the devil have? First of all, he has angels. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now you say, Brother Smith, who are these angels and where did they come from? Well, I tell you, my friends, if you will observe, you'll find that these angels... They all were formerly the heavenly host, or of the heavenly host. And the devil was successful in getting one-third of all of the angels of heaven to follow him in rebellion against God. So these angels were once in heaven. They were once worshipers of God. They were once, brother, the mighty angels of glory. But now they have been cast down to this earth. And the Bible declares that they are no longer holy angels, but the Bible declares that they are fallen angels. And we need to keep that in mind, that the devil has angels. My dear friends, he has messengers. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. 
And then I tell you, the Bible not only has angels and messengers, but he has ministers in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. Whether you believe it or not, there are many men in the pulpits today occupying the pulpit and receiving a salary for being preachers of the gospel who are nothing more than ministers of Satan. And then the Bible not only has, uh, the Bible says that the devil has angels and messengers and ministers, he has millions of followers. In 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 15, for some are already turned aside after Satan. And then he has children in John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. There is no such thing as the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of men. My dear friends, there are two fatherhoods. The fatherhood of God to all of the redeemed, to all of the blood-bought, to all of those that have been born again, and the fatherhood of the devil, who are in the, and all of you that do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and have not had a new, an experience called the new birth, all of you belong to the devil. You are his children. And then the Bible declares in 1 John 3.10, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not, doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And then we find that the devil has works. In 1 John 3.8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might, what? Destroy the works of the devil. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And then the devil in the seventh place has snares. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. And then in 2 Timothy 2, 26, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So we see then the devil has snares, and then he has wiles in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. But put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then he has devices in 2 Corinthians 2.10, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And then the devil has power in Acts chapter 26 and verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And then the devil has wrath in Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And then the devil has a will in Second Thessalonians 2, 28 and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So we see then what does the devil have? He has angels, he has messengers, he has ministers, he has followers, he has children, he has works, he has snares, he has wiles, he has devices, he has power, he has wrath, and he has a will. And then what does the devil do? What is it that the devil is able to accomplish? First of all, he converses. He's able to talk. Uh, in Job chapter 1 and verse 7, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his sustenance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So we see that the devil is able to converse with God and talk with God. And then we find in Job chapter 2 verse 1, Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth evil? And, uh, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord, and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man will, uh, hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. You cannot have his life. So when Satan was so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Now notice, my dear friends, that he was able to touch his body. He was able to take away all of his property, but he was not able to take away his life. The life that we have, the eternal life that we have, belongs to God, and Satan cannot touch that. And then we find that Satan not only converses, but he tempts. In Matthew 4, 1, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Matthew 4, 8, Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all of the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. Verses 9, and said unto him, All these will, things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And we find that the devil not only converses and tempts, but he talks. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Matthew 4, 6, And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And then he sows bad seed. Matthew chapter 13, verse 25, But while men slept, his enemy came, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. Matthew 13, 38, Ah, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And then he snatches away good seed. Luke chapter 8, verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. And then he blinds the minds of unbelievers to keep them from accepting the Lord Jesus and being saved. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And then he works in the children of disobedience, Ephesians 2, 2, Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And then he beguiles Christians from the sin simplicity of the gospel into deeper truths, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 and 3. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused to you one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And then he resists God's servants in Zechariah 3, 1. And he showed me jo Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And then he suggests sin in John 13 and 2, and supper being ended, the devil having now put it into the heart of Judas, is carried Simon's son to betray him. Acts 5, 3, and Peter said, Ananias, uh, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? And then he gets advantage of people in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And then in the twelfth place he hinders God's servants in 1 Thessalonians 2, 18. Wherefore he would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. 
And then in the thirteenth place he desires to have God's people. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And then he takes captives in Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 26 and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. And then he persecutes and accuses. Revelation 2.10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Revelation chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And then he knows many things, Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And then I want you to notice in the sixth place, his great power. All power, signs, and lying wonders, Second Thessalonians 2, 7. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And then we find that he is a leader of the great spiritual host. In Ephesians 6.11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And then he is the author of sin. Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman saith unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. 1 John 3, 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And then he is the author of sickness, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Luke chapter 13 and verse 16, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed from the bond of on the Sabbath day? And then we notice his power over death in Hebrews 2.14, For as much then as the children of our takers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. And then he transforms himself into an angel of light, according to Second Corinthians 11, 14, and 15, where the word of God declares, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, uh, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Neighbors, whether you believe it or not, the devil is real. Now, how can you hear so many scriptures and not believe that the devil is real, personal, present, and living, and tempting, and hindering you if you will permit it? The only one who can have victory over the devil is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you.